Next, let us look at return on invested capital ratios. So far, the ratios you did were all income statement ratios. You took the profit and the sales. So what is the gross profit? What is the net income? What is the operating profit on sales as a percentage of sales? Now we will take the return, that is the income, on capital. Capital, so this is from the income statement. The profits are derived from the income statement. And the capital, invested capital, maybe the assets, maybe only the equity shareholders, uh, whatever option we take, that is taken from the balance sheet. They are kind of mixed ratios, mixed between two financial statements. So let us see what are the return on invested capital ratios and what their implications are. First, let's do return on assets. What is your return? Net income. Net income. So, it's all after taxes, after interest, after taxes. The net income divided by assets into 100. When we take assets, we take average total assets. What is, what is that? Opening plus closing assets divided by 2. The whole thing divided by you, I, we discussed this when we did turnover ratios, etc. Why do we take our average? Suppose, suppose you had uh, opening assets, right? Opening assets, let's say you had, uh, how much? Let's say you had uh, uh, 1 million opening assets. Okay. Mid-year, during the mid-year, you purchase, let's say, 200,000 assets. So, what is your closing assets? Closing assets would then be, 1. Now, if I take opening assets, what does it mean? It means that I will get a return on 1 million. But it is not only 1 million worth of assets that I have used. I have used 1 million worth of assets for the full year and 200,000 uh, assets for half a year. Right? Of course, it's too cumbersome to take specifically what should be the utilization of the assets. So, roughly, roughly, we take opening plus closing by 2. Now, to take 1.2 million also may not be exactly entirely correct because after all, we did not employ 1.2 million assets for the full year. We employed 1 million for the full year, 200,000 for, uh, for only half a year. Yes, students. So whenever there is, uh, we did turnover ratio. We took, we took inventory turnover by average inventory. We took, we took debtors turnover by average debtors. So that is the principle behind taking an average. It is a rough estimate of the asset that was used during the year. Clear? So very simple. What is return on assets? The return, which is nothing but the net income, divided by the Assets into 100. When we take assets, if information is given, we take opening plus closing divided by 2. If information is not given, we assume that the closing asset and the opening assets are same and therefore just take the closing assets figure. <coughs> now, uh, this indicates how the assets are being used to generate profits and higher the ratio, the better it is. Actually, this ratio consists of uh, two components. One is a profitability ratio and the efficiency ratio. The profitability ratio, net income margin ratio, you remember what was net income margin ratio? Net income by sales into 100 into, into the turnover ratio, how efficiently you have used the turnover, uh, used the assets, that is sales by total assets. Of course, here also you would use average only. I just mentioned that it is assets. Followed. So, so now the sales and sales will cancel out, right? You get net income divided by total assets into 100 as before. This is in a DuPont analysis. This kind of breakup is made. The return on assets is equal to the profitability ratio. That is net income by sales into 100 into the efficiency ratio. In order to compute, you have these are the particulars, revenue, cost of goods sold, you get gross profit. This is the same statement we started off with, operating expenses, operating income, I have taken the same thing. Now let us say correspondingly, the balance sheet has been given. You have current assets and non-current assets, totally 2 million. Liabilities, current liabilities, non-current liabilities and the balancing figure is the shareholders equity. If that is the case, what is your return on investment, uh, return on assets? Come on, quickly tell me. 
That's right. Return on assets is net income which is 590,000, right? 590,000 divided by uh, 2,000,000. Yes or no? So 590 by 2,000 into 100. 29.5%. Not expressed, this is in 200, expressed as a percentage. Normally, return ratios are expressed as a percentage. Clear? If I take the other thing, is it equal to NI margin ratio into assets turnover? NI margin ratio is 11.80 into 2.5 times. Is that correct? Is it 11.5? 11, uh, sorry, 11.8 net profit margin is what? 590, right? 590 divided by net profit divided by sales. That is, let me take it as 5,000 into 100. Yeah? Into uh, assets turnover is what? Sales is 5 divided by 2. That's 2.5 times. 5 million is the sales divided, sorry, sorry, no, correct, sales divided by 2 million, <clears throat> that is 2.5 times, correct, 29.5, same thing as this, return on equity, so again, it's simple. It's self-explanatory. Most of these ratios are self-explanatory. Return on equity must be the net income on average equity. On equity, average equity opening plus closing capital divided by 2. Equity includes ordinary share capital and retained earnings. Normally, we take it for only the ordinary share capital. The net income when we take um, is after the, prefer after the payment of preference dividend. If any net income is the income which is available to equity shareholders after payment of preference dividend. So I can take this as net income minus preference dividend. Now this also consists of two components, the asset turnover and the financial leverage ratio. So, ROE can be equal to the ROA into the financial leverage ratio. Do you remember the financial leverage ratio? How much of the assets is funded by equity? So, let us say it's like this. Uh, NI is net, ROA is net income by total assets. Financial leverage ratio is total assets divided by equity. Total assets divided by equity. So remember this students, try to remember this, this breakup also because sometimes you get questions where only this kind of information is given and we have to figure out what is the return on equity. The return on assets multiplied by the financial leverage ratio which is nothing but total assets divided by equity. Again from the same example, if you compute ROE, what do you get? You get 590,000. We don't see any other preference dividend. So we will take 590,000 divided by what is shareholders equity? 720, right? 590 by 720, 81.94%. <clears throat> Return on equity is the return on assets into the financial leverage ratio. Financial leverage ratio is assets by equity. Assets is 2 million divided by 720 that is equal to 2.7778. So out of uh, 2 million assets less than much less than 50% is being held by is, is held by the equity shareholders. So these people are enjoying the benefits of leveraging more debt where their returns are high, higher than the cost of capital. So they earn 590,000, uh, 590,000, but they need to, they have paid an interest. This payment has been at a much lower rate, whatever is the percentage. That is why the percentage is not given separately here. That is why they tend to maximize their return. Return on equity. So, what is return on equity? Return divided by equity into 100. You take average equity. When you are taking equity shareholders, uh, that is that is not including the preference shareholders in the denominator, do not. You also subtract the preference dividend from the 
numerator. Right? The another definition for this could be can be related to the return on assets, return on assets into the financial leverage ratio. Now here only 36% of the assets are financed by equity and the balance are financed by debt. If all the assets were financed by equity, then ROE and ROE would be the same if the entire 2 million was financed by, uh, financed by shareholders' equity. Lower the proportion of equity that finances the assets, higher is the return on equity. Of course, provided that the return on assets is greater than the return of rate of interest. Are you following? So here, this is the impact of the leverage. We, we discussed financial leverage separately previously. So we are talking of now a financial leverage ratio, which is the total assets by the amount of equity. <clears throat> Having done all the profit ratios, so brief recap students, I hope you can. You remember, what is the gross margin percentage? Come on, that's right, gross profit by sales into 100, operating profit margin percentage would be operating income into 100, everything is expressed as normally into as a percentage, right? Uh, net profit is net income by sales into 100, EBITDA margin you take, what is EBITDA? Earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization into 100. Return on assets, net income by the average total assets, again expressed as a percentage of, uh, as a percentage and similarly if you take average equity, then this is on the basis of average equity. Of course, instead of, uh, no, we've taken gross profit, operating profit, net profit, EBITDA margin, return on assets and return on equity. Now let us, a brief discussion on the definition student. Sometimes what do you understand by equity? What do you understand by assets? Sometimes there is a small difference in the interpretation. Return on investment measures the return on capital employed, which includes all long-term funds. So that is equity, uh, that is ordinary shareholders, uh, shareholders capital, what he has paid up, the premium, the, 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 the retained earnings. It also includes the preference stock and it includes other long-term loans that we have taken. Normally, that's how this would be measured. Return on asset measures the return on assets employed and is likely to be the same as the ROI. ROE measures the returns to equity shareholders. In each case, the denominator could have different, different definitions. Now, let's take them one by one. Let's take return first before we go to the denominator. Higher the return, obviously, better is the return on investment or asset or ROE. When ROI or ROE is computed, we take earnings before interest and tax since it represents the earnings of all capital employed, including the long-term debt. Interest is the payment for the use of the debt. If equity does not include preference shareholding, then the net income should be less of preference dividend. So higher the return, normally the, the, the definitions may be the same, but sometimes it will change. And therefore, though we have discussed this as net income, return on assets is, is sometimes taken as the total return profits before the deduction of interest because interest is also because capital interest is a payment for for the long term capital which is used which is used in the business which is used which is invested let us say in assets and used in the day to day running of the business lower the total assets better the asset turnover and better the return on assets. So what they do is sometimes in the total assets, unproductive assets, if there's idle plant that is excluded so that I know what my actual efficiency is of what is really being used. Or if there are excess inventories, that may be excluded. 
Similarly, non-operating assets like securities may be excluded. What do you mean by non-operating? I have extra cash, I put it in securities and I earn some income. So that is a non-operating income. Income That may not be, that may be excluded and non-operating assets also would be then excluded. Similarly, when you take depreciable assets, they are taken net of depreciation. So what happens is the companies with older assets they will show higher profitability, but the assets may all be the same only because more depreciation has been written off, only because the asset was bought a long time back. But in reality, it may take much more to replace that particular asset. Some analysts also reduce preference share capital to be repaid. When ROI is computed, only long-term debts and equity may be considered. It represents long-term finance. Some analysts also reduce the preference share capital which is to be which is to be repaid. Of course, usually we take an average, like I said, so that you get a better idea of the assets which are employed. Depending on the needs of the user, the analyst or internal management will define both the numerator and the denominator of the return ratios. So these confusions are there. We shall use what we have discussed to keep uniformity, but understand that some of these are internal requirements and, and uh, internal requirements and based on our requirement, the definitions may vary slightly. So, so if we want to make comparisons, remember, the, the, the definitions must be the same. So, an analyst should definitely uh, ensure that he is taking, when making a comparison, he is defining the numerator and the denominator in the same manner.